What does Parkway mean to you? Parkway is where I fell back in love with football. You know, looking forward to it every Saturday rather than dreading it, thinking what if I had a bad performance, whatever. Coming from that, like, lifestyle of, you know, it's make or break, it's your career. So just enjoying it again, just getting back to like the social side of it, the the drinking, the away days, the atmosphere, it, all of it. Just uh, yeah, it's just it's just made me reminded me what football is, what football is about. After victory in the FA Cup last time out, Parker would head to Mangotsfield United, looking for their first Southern League win of the season. A familiar name would be back in the ranks at Cosham Street, as striker Adam Carter would join Parkway to bolster the Gaffer's attacking options. Yeah, I think it was good news, because obviously everyone knows Scott, especially around here. He's obviously here before, played with him before, I knew what he was about and I knew he could score goals, so when he came in it was definitely good news for, for all the whole team really. And he's, he's a good character around, around the club, around the lads. A six of the best performance in Bristol would see Parkway and their first ever seven league win in style as confidence was beginning to grow. I think as a player, as a, as a winger or attacking player that once you get the first goal of the season you sort of, that weights off your shoulders if you like and you think, oh, you know, I've scored now so I can, I can relax a little bit and get into the swing of things. I felt obviously after the two games where actually I thought even though we didn't get the results we, we, we looked very good and I think the fans even saw that that, that we impressed. Um, then we went to Mangersfield, got six, put six past them so I think we started really well, probably better than we maybe have in the past. Following the three points, Parkway would head home and 48 hours later they would return to Belifo for their first All Devon fixture of the season as they entertained old friends. Will and Rovers. Get him the fucking three points, like he's hopefully just kept giving you one and a half points. Okay? You fucking need to. 
But listen, to a man, every one of you, up your fucking tempo, show a bit of fucking threat, a bit of character, a bit of spunk. You've got fucking 500 people here. They're all going away thinking, fuck me, they ain't that good. Oh, I don't want that. Not at fucking home. Not at home. That's where we fucking entertain. What happens away from here with our 30 strong fucking supporters? That, that's, that is what it is. But here, we've got to be a fucking fortress. We've already dropped two points here. I don't want to drop no fucking more. That particular game, um, we were, once again, the first 15, 20, 25 minutes, they were the better team by far. And uh, it was, you know, it was no surprise, you know, their, um, their committee members were saying, oh, are you finding it as a game? And I was, we were struggling. I said, you know, we need to learn quick. Um, and we did, because in the second half, we, <laughs> we were by far the better team and, and we gave them a bit of a roast. And then Mikey Williams, yeah, he, he got us back into it. And yeah, what a goal, what a, what a player Mikey is. But he's that one player, I think, if you need someone to do something in the game, like, especially, like, I'd look at him and be like, Mikey, we, we need you here. And he'd just go and do something like that. Just like, or even if he wins a penalty or gets a foul, but he can take on three other players and stick it stick in the in the, in the net. So it's just like when you get someone on your team, it's it's madness, really. That's the beauty of the squad that we have. Um, there are game changers in that team everywhere you look. So uh, you know there, there's some real quality players that can just make a difference at, in an instant. A confident Parkway team would have been hard to beat in previous years and they would take that confidence to Hampshire for more FA Cup action as they face higher league opposition, Gosport Borough. Obviously it's a step up and you know, they're a good side and I think they were coming off a couple of good results so it was kind of a yeah what will be what will be game but as this team it proves we just never go into any game with defeatist attitude, we always go in thinking we can win.
Boy Dembele, he's coming off the side and it, an absolute worldie which has sent, I think it was about 6 700 there on the day. It, it was, listen, you couldn't even hear yourself. It was that noisy. 96 minute winners, they're magic. They're magic. And we're actually looking at it going, actually, perhaps the levels aren't that big here. Perhaps the gap isn't that big and perhaps we're not that far away. And again, so I think that that kind of result galvanised us. And then the bus journey home was really positive as well. So, um, yeah, that was uh, one of many you know, good journeys that we had. It was off the back of a good performance. So you can't get too downbeat. It was never going to win the FA Cup. So, as I say, so we, we put a good, a good performance in against a higher league opposition at the start, towards the start of the season. And I suppose for us, it was like you say, we was, we was never going to win it. So... It was what it was really in the end, and yeah, we enjoyed the bus home. Despite bowing out of the FA Cup, team spirit was growing, and even after defeat, the squad took part in the age-old tradition of new players' sing-song initiations. You never get bannered for it. You always get help from the lads. As long as you go for it and you're not like shy away from it, you go for it. You, you go for it. Yeah, we always support you, and um, I think it's just an icebreaker, really. It gets you involved. It makes it makes a fool out of yourself. Just be an, being an idiot, basically. But it gets you laughing, joking with your, with your mates, um, and yeah, almost just gets you involved in the club, almost. I'd be lying if I sat here and said, you know, they've they got cracking voices, you know, absolutely shocking, most of them. Um, but it's great for team spirit and, um, yeah, they're, they're a fabulous bunch of lads. If we're trying, so we're breaking free. Oh, what did I say? High School Musical, I think I sang. Why? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I just saw it on my phone and I was like, yeah, I'll do that one. <laughs> I do like a bit of Eminem though as well. Eminem is a good one. Now for us, yeah, you, you were starting to see the harmony starting to form. And you're looking around, obviously our sits where our sits on the bus and you're looking back and you're seeing them all bouncing around and you're seeing the smiles and you're thinking, yeah, we're away now, we're away. And, it, and you, you sense it, you sense it. And they were going out and doing things together without management, without staff, and organising nights out, organising meals, and it's nice to see. After exiting the FA Cup, Parkway would travel to bottom side Barnstable looking to progress in the League Cup, but complacency would be the hot topic before kick-off. How many fucking times is it going to take us to hear different voices within warm-ups and the professionalism start to come to the fucking party. Because that warm-up's fucking disgusting. That poor c**t's on crutches, hobbling around, and no c**t giving a fuck. Set the fucking standard. You want to be there, you want us to fucking put you there. But if you don't do the right things in terms of that, we ain't gonna fucking back you. Fucking poor, from minute one. Don't fucking have it. Don't deliver it. Don't fucking accept it. See, him noisy, him once or twice, it's not fucking good enough. F 
fucking sort it out. A second half rally from Parkway would see the game head to the lottery of penalties. A learning curve in all areas on the night would see them exit two cup competitions in the space of four days, with the season only a month old. Despite the defeats, the Parkway name has been growing over the years as the club looked to engage with the local community. Two people who have bought into this ethos are Brett and Lee, affectionately known as the Hairy Bikers. Let's say, I, I used to sort of, I li I've lived in this area for quite a while now, and I'd walk my dog, well, my dog's 10 years old, so I'd walk my dog up there all the time, see this here, and I didn't really realise what it was. It's not what it is now with all the sort of grandstands and stuff. So, just walk my dogs, and then you moved into the area about three years ago. Yeah. I'm a Liverpool fan, he's a Tottenham fan. <laughs> Sorry. And, and he um, only lives a minute's walk away from me. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Someone who shall remain nameless said, Oi, boys, you're always up there watching the games. Come in at half-time. So we grabbed our stuff, didn't we, from the bank and then walked to the gates. And uh, Sean let us in, didn't he? Sean yeah, he opened the flood lo flo uh, yeah. flood lo floodgates in, in, didn't it? Yeah, we came in, and like, oh, they got, you know, clubhouse, got a pint, didn't we? Yeah, we came in, it's always oh, three quid a pint. Well, Lovely! Yeah, 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 grabbed a pint, went up there, <laughs> FaceTime the missus, and that, guess where we are? Yo. Oh, God. Yeah, perfect. And we've been hooked ever since, haven't we? Yeah? That's it. Three years? Yeah, three years ago. Like we were stood up there. With none of this, we sat there pissing down rain with our brollies and our wet weather gear going, come on, park we? <laughs> yeah. And then we're in 10 to, and then the floodlights go off. Yeah. You're like, you taking a piss? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go home. Yeah, I can't go home to her. <laughs> I'm staying. <laughs> oh, we love it, yeah. The fans would look on once again as Parkway returned to league action, looking to put the midweek cup defeat behind them as they entertained another Devon side, Biddeford at Belifer. Not one for really coming in at you now and giving you a big praise. 
But all barring the scoreline, you 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 started where we left off at Barnstable. You have, which was being relentless. Well done. Well done. Hey, hang on, Rev. Do not shoot yourselves in the foot by starting slow and giving them a lifeline yeah. through a, a fucking shit mistake or a, an individual error collectively before we get the fucking game on. Tom, central, get in between them. Hey, Charlie, see, see. Get closer, Mike. Good boy. He's in. Good, Bassey. Slip in. Go on, Bassey. Go on, go on, go on. The team would get back to winning ways, including a wonder strike by Jordan Cop. But the story of the night would be the marquee signing of the summer, Tom Bath, netting his first league goal. I think he needed that goal for himself personally and he's one of them where he's, he's fitting so lovely around the dressing room that you know it's a bit of a tough start for him in terms of performance on the pitch um, so we're all really delighted that he managed to get that goal against Biddeford. We all wanted him to score and we all looking for him to score and really when he scored it was just we knew that relief was off the shoulders. The, you could see it in his face he was so happy so yeah we just celebrated like it was one of our own goals really. It was just more of a relief, just to get off the mark. And I remember the boys, and the, the boys were so supportive, and they come over to me, and it was more just, here you go, now can you kick on from it? Can you go and get another one? Can you keep going, keep going and going? It's all about confidence. And I've never been shy of being confident or anything like that. It's just, when one goes in, it's just, it gives you that, gives you that extra bit of momentum almost, and just to go get more. It would be two games in four days as Parkway stayed in Plymouth, as they welcomed Poulton Rovers to Belitho, looking to make it four league wins on the bounce. Well, it's a team we've got to beat. They're three points behind us. If we beat them today, we can go six points clear. We did play them down here in the cup, and there was very good football inside. Very good football inside. So I do believe we've got to get at them early. They've arrived late again due to traffic. So when these teams come now, we've got to use it as an advantage, get in some early and up we can get on top of them, but I think it'll be a tough game today.
Uh, fans play a part as well, Lee, finally. Um, 450, uh, 442 here today. That's over 400 for every home game so far. Excellent. It's an excellent end. As I say to my players before every game, we, we're here to entertain. Um, we're not here just to turn up and play a game of football, we're here to entertain them. So for me, the eight quid that they spend or whatever it is, it's important that they get their value for money. Um, to, to, to be fair, they probably have because I think we scored a four goals here, another four goals and then a five year. So they are getting goals, um, but I want us to be play, play well every week. You know? But I understand that that can't always happen. Um, but no, look, they're getting their money's worth in, in long may that continue where they keep coming through the gate. I'm loving it. Yeah, I get excited every Saturday morning. I'm buzzing for it. I lost, I lost a bit of art for it when I was playing in other teams and I've come here and I've just found the love for the game again. What is that? I think just coming, knowing you're coming into a changing room with lads that are all feeling the same. No one's in there. No, no one doesn't want to be here. Everyone wants to go out there and win. Most lads on Saturday don't want to come here and play football and waste their whole day. Like, every single lad in there is here to win a game of football. And it's just, I feel like I'm in a professional environment again. It's just really nice. You get treated like a celebrity around there sometimes, and, and it's amazing. It's it's good. You, you, it's such a family club. Um, obviously, we lost um, Barry recently, and, and he's my um, my relative. So recently, I felt even more part of the family. Everyone's got around me, and it's really good. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. I, I will to the day um, I leave, which I don't hope comes anytime soon. But yeah, it's it's amazing. I, I love it. Here. Parkway would move into the top five after seven games as October slowly crept in. A month the club have notoriously struggled in over the past few years. A cold wet Tuesday night at the Creek would be the venue as Parkway looked to make it five league wins in a row against Bristol Manor Farm. On the bench, September, we've come with five players missing and we found ourselves two one to be fucking good. So I would rather be in this dressing room, notifying what I've got and trying to find a way out of how we can score or see how two one win, than in there where I've got to chase a fucking game. And my subs might prove pivotal, pivotal. Going down the hill now, don't know if that'll help us or it won't help us, I don't know, but listen, we've got to find a way to win. I just felt they were the better team. Come, come the end of the game, even though we were 2 0 up, you can say what you want to say about tactics and what we should have done, could have done, didn't do. At the end of the day, they played extremely well. And to be fair, Bristol Manor Farm, in the two games we played them, they were one of the better teams. So, yeah, disappointing, 2 0 up, the best team won on the night. We could have easily not played that game because of. Fuel, fuel shortages at the time, um, say that weather was horrendous, but we made the journey up and yeah, we just went two nil up. I, don't, I wouldn't say we sat back, we just got, just got caught and just done on concentration and yeah, it was just a bad night in the end. 
Defeat is always hard to take, but the Yellows had to dust themselves off as they travelled to Highworth Town, and another slice of club history as they enter the FA Trophy competition for the first time. We haven't fucking played these yet, so we are going into unknown territory where we don't know what we're going to get. We do not know what we're fucking coming up against. I've had no fucking detail. They're a club who tries to go under the radar a little bit, but I found themselves in sixth position. So that tells me, see past the drinking culture, see past the social media, it's all laughing and joking, they ain't a fucking bad side. Okay, they ain't a bad team. So if our approach ain't right, for mentality, ain't the going fucking win from minute one, we'll find ourselves one nil down, two nil down, not just an hill to climb out there, a fucking mountain. Proud day for the club, but is it a proud day for you to captain captain a Parkway side in their first ever FA Trophy match? Yeah, definitely. And um, in terms of the result as well, and like you say, with the club, it's um, it's a little bit of money for the club. It's good to go into the next round, and you never know what you get. You get a nice tie at times. Strange game. How how was it to be playing in it? Um, yeah, we done them. Um, I thought we it was one of them. Well, I thought we were a lot better. Um, we were better than them, but we've given two sloppy goals again from set pieces and dead balls and we give him a chance but lucky enough we had a bit of quality and Craig has come up with the goods and I'm buzzing for Barfi because he's got the all-important one that's made it 4-3 and he deserved it for his hard work this year. Do you think that's big for Barfi? Obviously he's got his, he got his goal against Biddeford but this was a big goal. Massively, massively. That's in a proper game in, like you say, the first cup and he's the one that's come on and got us a good, the goods off cart, them two together. They've come on and they've done the business. Yes! 
yeah, obviously Lee wants me to come in and hit the ground running. He was he was really supportive. Um, I can't say a bad word about him. Um, he obviously he wants me to come in and score all the goals, and when it's not happening, sometimes sometimes it doesn't work like that. It doesn't it doesn't go well. Um, but yeah, he, he kept faith in me early on. Um, but again, if the goals aren't go, if I'm not doing my job. Um, then sometimes I've got to come out of the team for it. or And if that helps the team, which it, it does, if it did, um, then that's what, I've, that's what I was happy to do. Parkway would head back to Plymouth in good spirits. And after a tough pre-season, the squad have enjoyed a good start to life in the Southern League. This season, Parkway are under the guidance of a new coaching team, headed by Matt Cusack. Parkway have assembled a strong okay, so backroom go, staff. Two pitches, overload, underload. Okay, they're quite big, aren't they? Because if you think at one stage, you might have... when I first came in, I brought Godders with me, and uh, you know, Lee said when I, well, I muted it to Lee, he was like, you know, well, what will he do? And I said, well, you know, he's got these strengths and, and you know, strength and conditioning. He's he's on his own coaching pathway. He'll do some performance analysis for us. You know, he'd be a real good addition to the team, and he's gone above and beyond that and, and he's been absolutely superb for us uh, but in the close season obviously we've got Regan in which you know Lee sorted that out and, and Regs is a really good lad and and Duds as well I played under Stuart Dudley he's a really experienced manager at sort of like step six level he's coached in America um, he's a man that I've got utmost respect for and so I knew that he would be a really good fit as well obviously because we lost Sam Dole our ex-goalkeeping coach and Duds used to play at Parkway as well in goal, so he's got an affinity with the club. So we've just got some really good people in behind the scenes. And, but what I would say is that we're all really aligned. And you know, we don't always agree on everything, because I don't think the best teams do that. It's important not to have that. You want those different opinions. But, uh, but largely, we're all aligned and we're all pulling in the same direction. I think that's really important for the football team. Man now, man now. Love it, do you know? Yeah, it's been, it's been really, really good. You know. Matty and Goddard are sort of very forward thinking in sort of the things that they want to bring in, you know, and their ideas in sort of I've, I've come in as part of that, you know, them two are trying to develop what we're doing off the field, you know, so they were a big part of trying to get in uh, GPS pods, you know, trying to change from being a subjective environment to being very objective. I really enjoy it. I like being around in, in that environment with the lads. You know, all the lads have, have a lot of banter and camaraderie, you know, and they're very welcoming as well. Um, I enjoy it in the fact of, you know, it's, it's my job, it's my passion in just being able to provide that to the players on a Saturday and on a, obviously a, a match day in training, you know, is probably the, the pinnacle of the week. Yep, it helps massively. It helps massively because it allows me to get on with doing what I'm going to do and that they obviously plan what they're going to do and it works. It works. The season continued as Parkway travelled to Wiltshire to face playoff hopefuls Melksham Town. They would look to get back to winning ways in the league after defeat to Bristol Manor Farm last time out.
hear about gamesmanship, hear about closing games out. And I think we were guilty that day of, instead of like, let's settle for like 3-2, we're still trying to play football. We're still playing, saying it's glory balls, you know, kicking them down the outside of the, you know, the pitch. It, it, we didn't do what we should have done. As a, as a goalkeeper, you've got to be a little bit of a communicator, do you know what I mean? You've got to talk through your back line and talk to the holder midfielders and stuff like that. So you can affect the game in that way. But again, that, that day, I don't think any communication in the world would have probably stopped it. We just capitulated and just fell to pieces, to be honest. It was horrible. Really, really horrible. Because you think, is it 3-0 up and you're cruising, dreamland. And, I've made myself look a bit of an idiot that day because I remember being interviewed before the game and I was thinking, yeah, we should be right here today, this and the other, you know, but that's kind of lesson for me because you're not always going to be all right. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of a, it, it was a tough one, a tough day to take, a tough one to take. Dismay in Wiltshire would show frailties amongst the Parkway ranks with back-to-back -back league defeats when leading the game. Could they end the rot as they travel to Worcestershire to face Evesham United? in football. I know I'd only just lost the game of football, but you were coming off the back of already, I think it was two defeats, one to Manor Farm, one to Melksham. Um, we were at a low, we had our man sent off, and we've gone up there. I've given team talk, trying to, to drive it, and we've gone up there, and for me, it's probably the worst performance I've ever had in football. Um, we were an absolute disgrace. I think that game I might have got dragged quite early and I was sat next to the, uh, the gaffer on the bench and he said, I think you've got boys out there, I need, need men, you know what I mean? I think in his head then he's thinking, you know, if we made a mistake getting rid of some of these players, that kind of thing, are we lacking that mentality that, that we need to be at this level? So I think that was an important turning point and a, a deep thought for a lot of, lot of people that day. It was all going a little bit, mm, you know, and um, on the way back, Thankfully, I didn't go up on the coach that day. I had to get back for a, um, another event. And I drove back, and, it was, and uh, I had a long time to think to myself on the way back, well, you know, how's Lee going to pull this out? What's he going to do? 
I didn't score in, at all in October. Um, yeah, and I was on the bench for Evesham. And, you know, we st I think we started quite well. You know, we score a penalty, go, go one nil up. But then, as soon as they score, I feel like we just, we just didn't look like a team. We had no confidence at all. And, you know, that's not us. That's not us. That was a, a, a very bad day, um, a very bad month. Obviously, my interview with you was not my usual exuberant self, not my normal deal with situations, whether we were good, bad, won, lost. I was all over the place, all over the place. And I did have a sleepless night that night, and I think I did the next night as well. Um, but I knew we had to do something different, and we did next time out. The squad would return to Plymouth after a tough month on the road, with more questions than answers. They would have home comforts for their next fixture, but it wouldn't get any easier. Higher league opposition Merthyr Town would head to Belitho, as Parkway turned their attentions back to the FA Trophy. Simplify everything, do the basics <coughs> better than them, and you'll run more, fight more, and your quality will shine through. We've watched the game the other night, there's seven starters from me overnight and they travel with two subs, three subs, one of them's a goalkeeper, and two, the other two subs weren't even on the bench the other night. So look, it's an opportunity. If you want it, go and fucking take it. Okay? Go and take it. Be men, be leaders, be the better fucking team. Okay? Be the better team. My main aim for that game was purely, I don't care how we play, as long as we show desire, which we haven't shown for the past two, three games, then what will be, what will be. Ability is not everything, you know. If you've got a team full of lads who are going to work for you, then that will pay off. Like we stopped all tactics really and ended up just everyone, do all the crap stuff, just do that right, run hard and then tackle win your individual battles and that is, I think that's what we've done that day and I think that's how we ended up winning. I think that kick started the season really. Look, I went away, reflected, looked at it, spoke to some people who I really, really trust in football, people who've been in that sort of situation before um, and knew that, see past the names, 
you've got to go with legs and energy and people who run for you. Um, and people who, excuse my language, give her. That's what you had to pick. And that's, fortunately enough, we had, we could pick a team who would run, head, kick, tackle, fight, scrap. And I always knew that once you get, once you add that to the team, see past the quality, that'll get you a 1-0. One name that stood out in the win was new local lad Loney, Rio Garside, who had epitomised work rate with a sprinkling of quality. I've been here watching cart school girls when I was younger, as a little kid, and I, I, I've been through spells where I am a, a, like a partway fan. My dad would say, I'd say my dad is a partway fan. Um, I've got a lot of people that, when I came here that I, I know and I like, love the club. And it does mean a lot to me. Every time I put on that shirt, I can say oh, it, the club does mean something to me. Because especially being from Plymouth and my area, really, um, yeah, it does mean a lot. He's a good lad on and off the pitch again, and he's a, he's an honest, hard-working lad on the pitch. So that's where he done he done well for us because he grabs his bollocks off, and he's good on the ball as well. So he was always going to stand in good stead for us, and like I say, he got his goal that game, and again it, it, that kicked him on. I think for his long spell with us. Another figure who would also be back at Belitho would be Chairman Mark Russell, who had missed the nightmare October due to ill health. It was a horrible time for me personally, um, and then made all the worse with results that were happening. Um, and you know, I, can, I, I was sat there every Saturday, um, and there was one Saturday morning where I actually just burst into tears because I couldn't get to the football match, and that's how much it it meant to miss those games. So, you know, which I was a bit surprised in myself, to be honest, because I'm quite a strong person and, you know, I, I didn't expect it to get to me, but it really did. With October now a memory, the chairman back at games and a new work rate mentality, could Parkway convert this newfound attitude into the league? They would stay in Plymouth, but it would see them face league leaders Siren Sester Town, who would travel to Belifo unbeaten in the league. Could Parkway grab a first league win since September?
went into that with no respect almost for what they had done so far um, and just looked at it like this is our game to win, you're coming to our ground and we don't care what you've done so far. This is a new team, we've ch changed in our philosophy almost in terms of hard work and discipline and graft is what can get us results and yeah, they found that out that day. To win 1-0 again, you know, it was one of those dogged games where it, it could have gone both ways and but I think we just worked a little bit harder than them. We wanted it a little bit more. When that final whistle goes, it's, it's, a, it's a good moment, do you know what I mean? Getting them one nil wins, getting them clean sheets as a back four, or back five, including me. So, no, nah, they're, they're, good, they're good times, but I'd rather be 3 no up, to be honest. You're not up near the top for a reason. They were at the time, and, and you know, you're not up there if, if you're not a good football team, an effective football team. And so, uh, to, to get back-to-back -back results like that with two clean sheets was a real uplift for, the, for everybody in, in this club and it was fantastic. Right now, when the games are getting tough in their time, because that's what good teams learn to do. Against them especially, that, that was, you know, it showed, our, showed what we were all about. It showed what the team were all together, they were all playing for Lee and they were all playing for Parkway, that's what it looked like to me anyway. Outstanding to a man, fucking positive. Oh, you fucking outstanding, you. Brilliant. That's fucking fire it up. And it was one of those games as well. Obviously, you're right. It was my birthday week, 5th of November, I think it was my birthday that day. And it's when the half time, the dark starts to come in, the lights come on. Yeah, proper day that. Brilliant day.